Hello everyone, welcome back to Ari Adventures. In today's video, we will solve one crack me from the crackpeace.fun for gaming site. Uh, this for gaming site is basically just a huge collection of reverse engineering crack me's and key gen me's. And it also has the archive from one of the previous for gaming site, which is crackpeace.de, which is closed now for some reason. And from this website, we are going to solve the Armageddon challenge, which is basically a level 3 crack me and it's a it has the architecture type arm uh, the description says that it is a straightforward crack me uh, no patching and we have to find the correct input by no patching the user uh, the author means that uh, whatever key that we find should also work in the unpatched version in the original version that, that is provided on this website so we can do patching but yeah the code the key or the correct input should also work in the original version and it also says that it has some light obfuscation pattern and it was released in some ctf in 2019 so let's start so i've already downloaded the package and i've extracted it and it has a single file armageddon which is almost 26 kb uh, these two py files are created by me so let's just open this in some disassembler like binary ninja And let's jump to main so it just basically jumps to branches to another function then we see some interesting pattern here a single instruction then a branch then a single instruction then a branch single instruction branch and if you would check the linear view of it we can see that single instruction branch then four bytes of garbage single instruction branch four bytes of garbage single instruction branch four bytes of garbage so this is I believe the uh, what the obfuscation that was mentioned in the website is this that it just has branch instruction just to mess up with the control program so that the analysis becomes harder it is not too difficult but it makes it a little bit harder if you would zoom out then we can see that yeah it is all over the place this uh, obfuscation pattern so the first task would be to uh, which is not really needed in the scrap mint because it's a simple cracking but we can we would still do it is to patch out all of these branch instruction just to get a nice control program so that's what we will do first so uh, let's open the patcher.py uh, which i have already written so uh, let's start by first importing struct and uh, just for doing some byte stuff uh, packing and unpacking of bytes and I've already defined a function d1 which will just which is just basically a struct unpack which will just take uh, bytes and convert it into a uh, integer then next I will just open the armageddon binary uh, as a binary file and read it into the data variable and also I'll convert it into a byte array uh, because byte arrays are mutable so we, and we need to uh, change the bytes modify to patch that so i have to create convert it into a byte array then uh, i have defined the stop variable so in arm there is no stop instruction as far as i know I, so what we can do instead is we can just use some pattern like uh, move into regist r0 r0 or move into r1 r1 which basically means nothing because if we would move from r0 into r0 or from R Z r7 into r7 it basically means a knob because we are moving into the same register so i have used uh, knob as move r7 r7 which has the opcode this then uh, we need an iterator for i equal to zero i am using a while just uh, we will know why i am using a while instead of a for so i will iterate for uh, until i is less than the length of data minus four because we have uh, because each and every instruction in arm is four bytes in the normal board as we can see it here in the upboard all of these are just four bytes exactly four bytes so that's why i have to do a minus four then uh, then we will get data of i to i plus four because each and every opcode is four bytes so we get i to i plus four uh, four, uh, four bytes and we convert it into an integer because these are bytes we convert it back into an integer and we check if it is an ea and zero zeros and i got this from here as you can see that each and every branch instruction is this zero zeros and then ea each and every one of those it is just this 
so i am just checking if it is equal to that if so if so i will just patch at that uh, at that offset i'll just patch it with knob plus at the next uh, at the uh, 0 to plus 4 and then plus 4 to plus 8 because we can see that the branch and then four bytes of garbage so we have to patch the branch plus this garbage that's why there are two overrides to knob two overrides of knob and then we just increment i by 8 because we have consumed two d words which is basically for eight bytes and then else if it is not this then we just need to increment it by one we can increment it by four but yeah we are going to run this script just once so we don't really care about that then finally we just uh, open a uh, patch.bin and just write whatever data we have modified and let's just save this and run the script and we can see that uh, there is a patch.bin created which has the exact save size from the pre uh, original binary now let's just open this file in binary ninja to see how the control flow graph looks now jumping to main uh, we can see that the control flow graph has become a lot cleaner uh, still we have these instructions uh, move r7 r7 we can ignore it uh, for removing them we have to do some elf magic and change the headers in the elf but i uh, it would be a too complex process here so i didn't do that and we can just ignore these move r7 r7 so let's start by reversing now so you can see that first it uh, prints something then it says enter code and then there's a scanf uh, with the format string as percent 41s so i'm not fully sure if 41 uh, 41 is with a null byte or without but i'm just going to consider that it is without a null byte and uh, to, to scanf the first argument uh, so in the arm the calling convention is uh, first argument will be in r0 then r1 then r2 so the first argument to scanf will be r0 which is basically this format string and the second argument where our input will be stored will be in r1 so if we would look here is r1 so this var 38 is actually our input so we can just rename it to input and uh, then what it does is it moves into r0 our input and it calls this function so basically uh, we are just passing input into this function so here we can see that a lot of math loading bytes and then uh, multiplication loading byte multiplication so uh, we could reverse it but uh, because binary ninja supports some decompile uh, compilation uh, it is still not the most perfect but yeah it does work so we could look at this pseudo c and we can see what is happening here so what it does is it uh, let me just rename it to input because we know that it is our input so we can see that uh, it does what it does is it takes input of one because it is a array of uh, which is a string which is array of character so it grabs input of one then it grabs input of x27 uh, with multiplying it then it multiplies input of 15 and it grabs uh, it grabs characters from different indices of that of the string that we provided and it calculates some does some math and calculates some result in this variable and whatever the result of that math should be equal to this if it is that then it returns our input back or else it just says code did not validate and we just exit out so okay we get a high level look that it just does some math with random indices of our input and checks it with some constant value and it has to be equal to that value uh, then we go back to main and we can see that this pattern is all over the place uh, moving input into r0 calling some function moving input into r0 calling some function and uh, if we go into some random function again like for example this and going into pseudo c again we can see that this pattern is also all over the place we grab some uh, character from a random indice uh, index and then do some math and then check it with some uh, constant value which is here so so now we could extract all of these rules one by one by hand but that would be too tedious process and we already have some another 
uh, method for doing this an easier way. So there is a new website called dogpole.org where we can upload our binaries and get the disassembly, uh, sorry, not disassembly, decompilation from various tools. And because Hexrace has the best decompiler out there, so we are just going to copy the decompilation output from this. And let me just open a new subline and then just plus plus. So we can see this is our main function and this is the call to all of these functions that is checking one by one the math so if you would go to like this function we can see that the decompiler is just so good that it just uh, minimize the whatever the math equation is so all we need to do is from all of these functions we just need to extract these uh, equations so for doing that i'm going to do is we just go to this function we don't need whatever is before that and we also need, don't need whatever is after that so we are left with all the functions that are just checking this checking whatever our input is with this equation so now i can just do some magic with this we, all we need is a if and we just need the if line and we can just find out instead of that i can just to find all copy this in a new and i'll just paste it so i have copied all of the ifs if conditions from that now all we need to do is uh, replace an if if with the is dot add i'll tell you why we are doing that just in a second so now we have all the rules that was from the binary in a python manner uh, in a python Form. so we'll need this later so now let's start with our solver so i have already created a solver so first the most important part we need z3 so if you don't know z3 z3 is basically a smt slash sap solver which basically in the most easiest form is that we can just provide all of the equations that we got into z3 and we can instruct it to tell that what could be the solution of it so that all of these equations are true so yeah we imported z3 then the flag length is 41 that we got from the scanf in the main function as you can see it here mm, right here 41 is so the flag length we can deduce that could be 40 or 41 but i am considering that it is 41 then we create a result variable uh, i named it result because uh, uh, hex race uh, sorry ida named it result so i also named it result just to have some consistency so we have a result which is basically this is a list comprehension so what we are doing we are creating bit vectors so basically the unknowns that z3 knows is bit vector and we have to give it a name so i gave the name result underscore and this is an i so i is changing i variable is from this for so it will be result zero result underscore one result underscore two and we also have to provide a size so i provide that the size as eight bits this is in bits so because our input is a character array and a character is eight bits so i provided eight bits here eight. then we have to create a solver so uh, this is just a function from c3 so i have defined s equal to solver then i've copied all of the rules so uh, the rules from here i've copied them into here and basically s dot add means we are just adding the rules to our solver so we added one by one these rules that a uh, result of one time result of 39 and all of this should be equal to this all of this should be equal to this we just added all of the rules uh, one by one and then also i have added some more constraints the the next constraint is that for each and every character the character should be greater than a space uh, 32 means basically means a space and it should be less than 127 so this basically means that each and every character that would be uh, found in the result should be ascii printable uh, because the solution can have non-printable characters but we only want ascii printable characters then we just check 
this s is our solver so we just check if it is satisfiable so whatever conditions we give uh, we just check if uh, z3 has found a solution or not if it is even satisfiable or not then if it is satisfiable then we want our solution so s dot model holds the solution so i'll just uh, move that into a variable solution then o is for our output then for whatever the flag length is that we defined at above we what we need to do is we need the result of i solution of result of i this is the way of getting a, the exact byte from a bit vector and we have to call as long on that to get the actual integer value and now because we have the integer value we can just convert it into a character and append it to our o variable then finally after doing this we can just print our o variable and let's save it and try to run it and let's see what we get so we get this umdctfr miss s1 satisfying so this kind of looks like a flag it doesn't have a closing press but we can still try to run or submit this so i have copied the crack me into my linux vm uh, this is actually an x86 system but i have kemu installed so i could run this arm file so i'll just run the unpatched version this is not the patched one so i'm running it and i provided this and it says that code validated successfully so yeah we have successfully reversed this crack me uh, so just a recap we started from a let me open that again just a recap so we started with this binary which has some light obfuscation of branches with some uh, garbage at, uh, in between so we first patched this to fix the control program then we used the decompiler from dogpole.org and we copied the decompiled code and extracted all of the rules and then we provided all of these rules into z3 and we found uh, added some more constraints to just get the solution and we checked that it works so that's all for the video thank you for watching keep hacking and stay awesome